Now here's an equation that looks innocent enough at first glance. 2 to the power of x equals x squared. But as we'll see, finding all the solutions takes us on quite the mathematical adventure, through some familiar territory in algebra and calculus, and then into the realm of a rather special function that might be new to you. Before we get our hands dirty with algebra, let's start by building some visual intuition. The solutions we're looking for are just the points where two familiar curves cross each other. Let's set up our coordinate system to see what's going on. Here's the left side of our equation. The exponential function y equals 2 to the power of x. Notice how it starts very small for negative x values and then shoots up rapidly as x increases. And here's the right side, our familiar parabola, y equals x squared. This classic U-shape is symmetric about the y-axis. Looking at the right side of our graph, we can spot two clear intersection points. These happen to be at the nice integer values x equals 2 and x equals 4. We can verify these by plugging them in. But here's where things get interesting. If we zoom in on the left side of our graph, we can see hints of a third intersection point lurking in the negative territory. Finding this sneaky solution will require some more sophisticated mathematical tools. So our visual inspection suggests there are exactly three real solutions to hunt down. Now let's prove this rigorously and find them all. To be completely rigorous, we need to consider all possible real numbers. But here's the thing, some of our favorite algebraic tools like logarithms come with domain restrictions. So we'll need to split our analysis into separate cases to handle these restrictions properly. Let's start with the easiest case. What happens when x equals 0? When we plug in 0, the left side gives us 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. The right side gives us 0 squared, which is 0. Since 1 doesn't equal 0, x equals 0 is definitely not a solution. Now let's tackle the positive domain where x is greater than zero. This is the friendly territory where we can safely use logarithms without worrying about domain issues. Let's start fresh with our original equation. Since x is positive, both sides of our equation are positive, which means we can take the natural logarithm of both sides, a powerful move that will help us tame those exponents. This transforms our equation into the natural log of two to the x equals the natural log of x squared. Here's a useful logarithm property to keep in mind. The log of x squared equals two times the log of the absolute value of x. But since we're working in the positive domain, we don't need to worry about absolute values. Using the power rule for logarithms on both sides, we can pull those variables out of the exponents, which is exactly what we want. Now, to get a clearer picture of what's happening, let's rearrange things. We'll divide both sides by 2x to isolate the logarithmic part. This rearrangement reveals something elegant. We now have a function on one side, the natural log of x divided by x, and a constant on the other. This suggests we should study this function more carefully. Let's give this function a name. We'll call it f of x. The solutions to our original equation are simply the x values where this function equals our constant. To understand how this function behaves, we need to look at its derivative. Using the quotient rule gives us this expression. To find the critical points where the function might have peaks or valleys, we set this derivative equal to zero. Since the denominator is always positive, this happens exactly when the numerator equals zero. So we need to solve one minus the natural log of x equals zero. Rearranging this gives us one equals the natural log of x. To solve for x, we exponentiate both sides. This reveals a single critical point at x equals e, Euler's number, that fundamental constant of mathematics. This critical point turns out to be a global maximum. The peak value of our function is 1 over e, which works out to be approximately 0 0.3679. Now, what about our target value, the constant on the right side of our equation? The natural log of 2 divided by 2 comes out to approximately 0 0.3466. Now let's see this function behavior graphically to really understand what's happening. 
Let's create a new graph focused specifically on our function f of x equals natural log of x over x. Here's our function. Notice how it rises from the left, reaches a single peak, then falls off to the right. Exactly what our derivative analysis predicted. Now let's add our target horizontal line at height natural log of 2 over 2. Perfect! We can see exactly two intersection points confirming our analysis. The horizontal line crosses the curve once, on the way up to the maximum at x equals e, and once on the way down. Now let's rigorously verify that these intersection points actually solve our original equation. Let's verify our first solution. When x equals 2, f of 2 gives us natural log of 2 over 2, which matches our target value exactly. For our second solution, when x equals 4, we get natural log of 4 over 4, since natural log of 4 equals 2 times natural log of 2. This simplifies to natural log of 2 over 2 as well. And we can double check in our original equation. 2 to the power of 2 equals 4, which equals 2 squared. And 2 to the power of 4 equals 16, which equals 4 squared. Both check out perfectly. Now here's the crucial question. How do we know there are exactly two positive solutions and no more? Here's the key insight from our derivative analysis. The function f of x has exactly one critical point, and we found it at x equals e. This means the function is increasing before e and decreasing after e, making x equals e a global maximum. Since our target value is below this unique maximum, any horizontal line at this height must cross the curve exactly twice. Once on the increasing part of the curve and once on the decreasing part. This completes our rigorous proof that there are exactly two positive solutions. Therefore, x equals 2 and x equals 4 are the only positive solutions to our equation. Our function analysis has given us both the solutions and the proof that these are the only ones. Now for the trickiest part, what happens when x is negative? Here, logarithms become problematic since we can't take the log of a negative number. We need a completely different approach. Let's go back to our original equation and try a different tactic. What if we take the square root of both sides? This transforms our equation into 2 to the x, all raised to the power of 1 half equals x squared raised to the power of 1 half. Using the power rule, this simplifies beautifully to 2 to the power of x over 2 equals the absolute value of x. Since we're looking for negative values of x, the absolute value of x is just negative x. This gives us the equation we need to solve for our negative solution. Now here's where things get really interesting. To solve this equation, we need to call upon a rather special function that you might not have encountered before. Meet the Lambert W function. It's essentially the inverse of the function z times e to the z. If you have some constant c that equals z times e to the z, then z equals w of c. It's built into most computer algebra systems and programming languages, though you won't find it on your typical calculator. Our strategy is to massage our equation into this special form, some constant equals some variable times e to the power of that same variable. Then we can apply the Lambert W function to solve it. Let's start by rearranging. We'll move the exponential term to the right side. The Lambert W function is designed to work with base e, but we have base 2. No problem. We can rewrite 2 as e to the power of the natural log of 2. Making this substitution transforms our equation into the form we need. Using the power rule for exponents, we can combine these terms in the exponent. We're getting close to our target form. For the z times e to the z pattern, the coefficient in front needs to match what's in the exponent. We can achieve this by factoring out the right constant. Perfect. Even though x is negative, notice that our z term here is actually positive. This is exactly the form we need for the Lambert w function. Now we can apply the Lambert w function to both sides. Since our argument is positive, we use the principal branch, which gives us a unique real value. Now, we just need to solve for x using some straightforward algebra. And there we have it. 
the exact symbolic form of our third and final solution, expressed in terms of the Lambert W function. For the numerical value, we can compute that W of natural log of 2 over 2 is approximately 0 0.2657. Plugging this back in gives us our final answer, approximately negative 0 0.7667. Let's take a step back and see what we've accomplished. Through our systematic case-by-case -case analysis, we've proven that this deceptively simple equation has exactly three real solutions. Our calculus approach in the positive domain revealed two solutions, x equals 2 and x equals 4. The Lambert W function helped us uncover one solution in the negative domain, and we verified that zero is not a solution. That's all of them a complete solution set. For one final satisfying confirmation of our work, let's visualize all three solutions together. Here's our coordinate system one more time, and here are our two players, the exponential function in blue and the quadratic in green. And there they are, our three intersection points, marked and labeled. It's quite satisfying to see how our rigorous mathematical analysis perfectly matches what we can observe visually. From a simple-looking equation to exponential functions, calculus, and even the Lambert W function, mathematics never fails to surprise us with its depth and interconnectedness. Thanks for joining me on this mathematical journey. If you enjoyed exploring this equation and learning about the Lambert W function, I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a like and consider subscribing for more mathematical adventures. Until next time, Keep questioning and keep learning.